right, what is going on guys? That trigger here, and as you guys could see in today's video, we are here making a tier list for you guys. It's gonna be based on the Mortal Kombat 11 characters and how they are online. Now, when I did this last time, it was based on local play, which is something that not a lot of you understood well. But here I am making an actual accurate one. This one's going to be based on online matches only, whether it's ranked, tournaments, combat league, whatever it is. This is solely going to be based on online matches. Now, unlike the other YouTubers that I've actually done a tier list like this, I'm actually going to be doing it a little bit differently. And I'm actually going to be putting all the characters in their specific spots right now. So basically, every single character is already going to be on the list. However, I will be talking about each character one at a time. This is something that I slacked on recently, and I realized that this is what I had to do in order for me to be as accurate as possible. So give me some time here. I'm going to put every single character where they are supposed to be, at least in my opinion. So right off the bat, you're going to see what my tier list is in three, two, one. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the official dead trigger tier list for when it comes to ranked matches. Since I don't want this video to be too long, I'm just going to talk about the important things and as to why I placed them in their specific spots. So if you were expecting, you know, bigger explanations, I'm sorry, but that's just not going to happen because I feel like most of you have a generic idea as to why they are in their specific spots. So right off the bat, I'm going to talk about the best and the worst characters. I'm going to try to keep it simple and straight to the point. So let's get right into it. So first off, I want to talk about something that you guys probably have noticed and might come to a shock to some of you, but nobody's actually on my D tier. Now, the reason why is because I genuinely don't think that there's any character in this game that is necessarily bad or trash. And as much as I hate characters like Jackie Briggs who are on the S tier, you know, the Cetrions, the Sub-Zeros especially, they are there for good reason, but there is nobody that I think deserves a buff. I think every character is fine the way they are, or at least better than okay. And as you guys are seeing right now, there is, of course, a best and a worst character. And the best character, obviously, is Jackie Briggs to me. I kid you guys not. Anytime I look at competitive gameplay and I watch videos and streams and even myself going into combat league and tournaments and ranked matches and all that kind of stuff, 90% of the time, you're gonna run into a Jackie Briggs player, and if they know how to use her, oh my goodness, she is completely unstoppable. Now, literally, with three special moves, the Air Ground Pound, the Enhanced Air Blast, and the Bionic Bounce, those three simple moves right there is what makes her an unstoppable force. Literally, I genuinely can't even beat a jackie briggs player anytime i go against one i just simply want to leave and that's how most of the s tier is but i'll talk about that in a bit but jackie briggs hands down is in my opinion at least the greatest mortal Kombat 11 character because of how broken she is unfortunately but it is what it is as far as the worst character in my opinion goes obviously it has to go to shiva now thankfully she did get nerfed i am so happy that she did because those stomps would have annoyed a lot of people and simply because of that i definitely would have put her in d tier and definitely would have been worse trash character it takes no skill none of that but thankfully she did get nerfed and now it almost seems like every single shiva player that used the stomps just moved on to sub-zero because literally shiva players don't even exist anymore and literally when you do find one be grateful because it's rare now it's very very rare and when a player actually learns how to use shiva and actually masters her and maybe even mains her she does tend to be an okay character to me. I do feel like she is a little bit too predictable. She's one of the slow characters. And even though she is a slow character, I do feel like her movesets are right. She has a decent amount of special moves and crushing blows. But, I mean, in all honesty, the only thing good about Shiva to me is her armor breaker. I think it's probably one of the best in the game. It does a lot of damage. And also her fatal blow as well. It's really good. But at the end of the day i just really wouldn't have the time to learn how to use shiva she just doesn't seem like an interesting character to me i just see her as a bootleg goru to be honest and that's how it's always been unfortunately i honestly don't have any interest in this character i don't even bother to practice with her if anything i'll probably only use her for classic tower videos and that's pretty much it but online although she used to be a little bit deadly now she's just a character that's been forgotten because she just got nerfed so hard but thankfully i don't think she's a bad character like i said i think her armor breaker and the damage that she does with her moves saved her from being in the d tier so let's move on here next up we have cetrion obviously i think this one's a no-brainer as well she is the queen of projectiles the queen of zoning and not to mention she also has a probably the best armor breaker in the game really good fatal blow the only thing that I think she lacks is damage, I would say, but 
I mean, the fact that she's the queen of zoning, it almost seems like she doesn't even need none of that. She has the projectiles. She has a lot of strings as well that are really safe on block. Overall, I just think she's an overpowered character as well. She literally has everything that you want in a character, except damage, I guess you could say. Being honest, I just see her as Tremor 2.0 and probably a little bit of a nerf version, if anything. Oh boy, oh boy. Next up is Sub-Zero. Ladies and gentlemen, where do I even begin with this guy? Matter of fact, I don't even think I need to begin at all. I mean, it's Sub-Zero. If he's not an S tier for you, you're just mad because of the mix-ups. And don't worry, you're not the only one. Trust me. If there's any character out there that everybody despises in this game, it's Sub-Zero. But just imagine if we lived in a world in which all of us could actually predict 50-50s from Sub-Zero. Man, what a world that would be. But sadly, we live in a world in which those 50-50s are almost unreactable and unpredictable as well. The reason why I don't think he's the greatest character of all time is because when the opponent does actually read the Sub-Zero player properly, it ends up becoming really scary for him. He ends up being very punishable. Not to mention his armor breaker is probably one of the worst in the game. It's very slow, not the greatest, but like I said, it's Sub-Zero, 50-50 king, no matter what, but he's really annoying. Next up, we have my boy Fujin, and I'm going to say this right off the bat. I feel like Fujin is the most balanced and perfect character in this game. I honestly have no issues with this character when it comes to fighting him, playing him. There's nothing wrong with him. I guess the only thing you could say is that he could have a better armor breaker, but it's not even a bad one either. It's a pretty good one. I'm not going to lie. Those wind kicks, they don't lie. I always have a great time going against Fujin and even using him as well. He has a lot of unique special moves. He has a lot of good combos. I have nothing but respect for all you Fujin mains out there. You guys are the reason why I still play online to this day because anytime I go against you guys, I always have a great time. Speaking of fun, obviously, as you guys could see, the next character and the final character that's on the S tier is actually the Joker. Just like Fujin, I feel like the Joker is perfectly balanced. There's nothing wrong with him. He does have a really good amount of combos. Probably the best fatal blow in the game, hands down. It does the most damage, not to mention that you could even cancel it into a grab, which also does a lot of damage, which is very scary. But Nonetheless, the only reason why I think Fujin is slightly better is because although I do have fun with the Joker and most of the matches are with good players, I do sometimes deal with Jokers who actually just rely on projectiles, you know, the Batmans and the Jack in the Boxes. Thankfully, they're not really a pain to deal with because they end up losing the matches. But when I do go against a really good Joker player, I do have some intense ones. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. And at the end of the day, hey, as long as I have a good time, that's all that matters. Moving on to the A tier, we're going to be talking about Liu Kang first, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, his forward 4-3 was so annoying back in the day, and because of that, he definitely would have been on the S tier, but ever since it got nerfed, I feel like he's been such a fair character now, he's no longer broken to me, if anything, he's very similar to Fujin and the Joker, but I believe that if he was never nerfed, he definitely would have been on S tier. But this is why he's on the top of the A tier. Even though he isn't S, he deserves to be at least close to it. So this is why he is my first character on the A tier. I have no issues with Liu Kang anymore. I feel like he's a, such a balanced character. And I mean, you guys cannot ignore a guy like Ninja Killer, who is probably the Liu Kang god. I mean, yes, his gameplays are always fun to watch. Liu Kang is also the combo god. I mean, there's no other way to put it. He has a really good move set, just like what any other MK game should have with a character like Liu Kang. His armor breaker is also really good, especially if you use it in a corner, because man, that armor breaker could literally catch anybody by surprise. Everything else is self-explanatory. I mean, it's Liu Kang. He has to be a good character in every single Mortal Kombat game. Next up, we have Kronika's assistant, Garrus. What you guys are seeing on screen right now is me actually going up against a well-known Mortal Kombat player by the name of Tweety. Now, while I was in this tournament, I kid you guys not, he actually won the whole thing with Garrus. And this caught me by surprise because Garrus, to me, was actually still going to be in the great tier because of everything that he has when it comes to, like, moves. He has a lot of crushing blows. I think he has the most than any other character in this game. If anything, Garrus would have been right behind Spawn for me if I never met Tweety because Tweety to me just made me realize as to why Garrus is one of the greatest characters in this game. I always loved Garrus since the start. I thought he was a really unique character. He has a really good armor breaker. He has a lot of cool special moves. To me, Garrus and Liu Kang are almost equally the same, except the reason why I think Liu Kang is slightly better is because he's faster and not necessarily slower like Garrus, but that doesn't change the fact that Garrus is still a really great character in this game. I wish he comes back in MK12. I'm not going to lie to you guys. He's a character that I really want to see again because 
the way they did him in mortal kombat 11 was almost perfect i just feel like they gave him a little bit too many crushing blows next up on the list we have mr sonic the hedgehog himself cabal i feel like cabal is one of those characters in which i would tell my friends to use if it's their first time playing mortal kombat 11 because cabal literally has everything that a new player wants he has a good amount of combos, a good amount of special moves as well, not to mention that his Fatal Blow and his Armor Breaker are both amazing. But putting that all aside and talking about Cabal from a competitive standpoint, there is only one special move that I have to talk about here, and that is his Air Slight Gas move. This move is completely complicated because sometimes what works doesn't, if that makes sense. So let's say the way to counter this move is a down four. Yes, it is the way to do it, but sometimes it actually doesn't work because they do it in a specific way. Cabal is just a complicated character now, unfortunately, but putting that all aside, I still think he is an A tier character. And you know what? Even with that slight gas move, I feel like that's the reason why he's a little bit higher than most of these characters on that A tier. Because Cabal, right now at least, seems to be unstoppable because of that air slight gas move. But like I said, this is a perfect character for new players. I feel like I would want to learn Cabal first if it comes to Mortal Kombat 11. Next up on the list, we actually have Jade. Now, for those of you who don't know, she is my female character. Now, I am not one of those bums who uses her first variation, okay? I always loved her pole vaulting variation. That specific one to me is the reason why I fell in love with Jade in this game. I understand as to why so many people hate her, and I feel like most of it is because of the first variation move that she has. It's the air razor rings, pretty much. But if we were to put that special move aside for one second, she has a really good amount of combos. She is really fun to play with when it comes to the pole vaulting variation, at least. Most of her crushing blows that she has are actually pop-ups. And for those of you who don't know what that means, basically, after the crushing blow, you're able to combo right after that. And that's something that Jade, I felt, needed in this game. And thankfully, they gave her exactly what that was. Most of her crushing blows are actually pop-ups, which is really great for her. What that means is basically, once you hit the crushing blow, right after that, you're able to hit a combo and if they were to break away from any of these crushing blows i mean literally the armor break makes up for all of that because her armor breaker in my opinion is one of the best in the game i feel like it does so much damage no matter what crushing blow you do and even if you hit it in itself by using her i guess forward to one move maybe but like i said jade is a really fun character to use i'm just gonna completely ignore the fact that her first variation exists but just know that because of the first variation i feel like that's the reason why she's a little bit higher than most of these characters that are on the a tier Next up, we have Kotal Khan on the A tier, and I gotta say, this character grew on me a lot. At first, I would actually have him in the good tier, but I think the reason why he is a lot higher now is because when Mortal Kombat gave us the ability to have custom variations, I genuinely think the custom variations saved him as a character, because if it wasn't for that, he would have probably been in the good tier. But as of right now, Kotal Khan definitely deserves to be in the great tier for me now. He's a character that, like I said, really grew on me. I would love to use him a lot more. His totems are really fun, especially all the special moves that he has. Not to mention, his combos are absolutely deadly if he ends up hitting them with you. Plus the totems, oh man. You cannot mess with that. You just can't mess with that. One major thing that I love about Kotal Khan is his armor breaker. And even though I don't think it's the best armor breaker in the game, I have to say that I've been caught by it many, many times. And even in recent times as well. I've been fighting a lot of Kotal Khan players recently. There's something about his armor breaker that is just absolutely scary to deal with. I'm almost afraid to break away with a Kotal Khan player every single time. And I feel like because of that... He is a lot higher in my list, especially on the A tier now. He is just a character that absolutely grew on me. I would love to learn more about him. And overall, he is just a really fun character. Next up on the A tier, we have the one and only Kitana Khan. For me, it was hard to choose whether Koro was better than Kitana. But at the end of the day, I realized that Koro is more deadlier because of his totems. I also remembered Kitana from Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 9. But then I realized I think because of custom variations, Koro Khan was slightly better. And don't get me wrong, Kitana is also great. She has one of the best armor breakers in the game. Probably the second best in my opinion. She has a good amount of combo startups, a decent amount of crushing blows. But because of the game's mechanics, I just feel like she wasn't as powerful as she used to be. But even so... So, there's Kitana mains out there who managed to find new combos for her every once in a while. And because of that, I just feel like she's still a good character overall. She is still seen a lot in online matches. Next up on the A tier, we actually have Eren Black. And just like Koro Khan and Kitana, I feel like the game's mechanics ruin him as a character compared to what he used to be. Now, don't get me wrong. He is still a fun character overall. I feel like his Nether Beast Trap and the fact that you're able to have custom variations now save him as a character. Even though he has a lot of great and amazing special moves, I have to say the reason why he is lower than Kitana and Koro is because of his combo strings. Compared to all of these characters that you see on screen right now, I think Aaron Black only has like 
six or seven strings. And you might be thinking to yourself, if he has such a low amount of strings, why is he so high on your list? Well, it's simple. It's because half of those strings are mix-ups, just like Sub-Zeros. They are almost unreactable, unpredictable, because both are really, really fast. Whether it's an overhead or a low, you better guess properly, because one of those you're going to fall for. Still to this day, I always seem to find Aaron Black players, and for those who actually use the Armor Breaker, I, for some reason, always end up falling for them, because they know exactly when to time it right, and... For that reason, I just feel like Aaron Black is so high on the list because although he doesn't give much, things that he has is actually enough to make him a very deadly character. And I think the reason why is because of those mix-ups, like I said. If it wasn't for those mix-ups, he definitely would have been a lot lower in this game. But yes, you have moves like the TNT trap and even his big boots, his forward four, man, it's a really fun move to deal with especially. So overall... I really like Aaron Black in this game. I just wish they gave him a little bit more recognition. Compared to like MKX, man, he, he was nerfed so badly. Next up, we have the birthday boy. It was his birthday recently. I also consider him my main and personally the greatest Mortal Kombat guest character of all time. We have your boy, the Terminator. When I participated in a tournament recently, because of the Terminator, I actually ended up winning $200. I will never forget that day and it's all thanks to Arnold agreeing to being in the Mortal Kombat franchise. He has always been my favorite celebrity which is probably why I got really excited when I saw him in the trailer. So going back on topic here, I feel like there's only one thing that I don't like about him and it's actually his armor breaker. I just feel like it's one of the weaker ones in the game. But other than that, he literally has everything that I want in a character. He has mix-ups, he has a lot of great special moves, a lot of great combos, he has the best fatal blow animation in the game in my opinion get over here there's a lot of people out there that don't really like him because he isn't necessarily a good character when it comes to keep aways like cetrion and sub-zero who all they do is spam projectiles i gotta admit he's not really good when it comes to that however that's where his teleporter comes in and this is what i was talking about in the beginning when i said i like a challenge literally Using the teleporter recently is something that a lot of Terminator players have done, including myself. And I gotta say, it's the greatest thing in the world using that teleporter, especially when you manage to hit those combos. Man, it's just so juicy. I believe he is the only character that has a hopping crushing blow, which is something that is very unique to him. I am so glad that he has this because most of the time when I go against online players and they end up like rolling and spamming down one on me, I always end up hitting them with the, this crushing blow. And honestly, it's just really satisfying to hit. It's also a pop up, which just makes it 10 times better. But yes, to Shogun is also amazing and overall I am just thankful that he is in this game a lot of people trash on him because of the zoning prospect of it but like I said when it comes to that I always use the teleporting and it's always fun to do so Terminator for me has to be on A tier at least and I as much as I want to put him on S tier because he's my main I wanted to be as fair as possible in this video next up on the A tier we have another guest character by the name of Spawn now I have to admit at first I actually didn't know who this guy was but when I heard that it was gonna take a long time for him to get him as DLC I realized that that was enough time to actually learn about the character and I have to say after watching the whole series he is probably one of the most badass characters I've ever seen he is a really fun character in the game as well just like the series if you are in a corner with Spawn you are absolutely screwed and although there are ways in which you can counter the three fours and all that kind of stuff it is very complicated to do so especially when the spawn player knows exactly how to keep his distance because of how far his 3-4 reaches although not a lot of people use it i have to say that he does have a good armor breaker he has a really good amount of crushing blows almost all of his combos are really fun to do especially if you're in the corner and you end up grabbing your opponent and getting that crushing blow mixed with the combo oh my god his special moves are fantastic and overall i am just so happy that he ended up being in the game and now i can see why a lot of people wanted him especially a guy like dynasty who was really freaking out to hearing the fact that spawn was here so I'm glad he's in the game. Shout out to Keith David as well. What an amazing voice actor you are. And I'm so glad you managed to voice Spawn in this game. And I'm really happy. So Spawn, overall, you're a great character. I am glad that you're here. Next up, we have Collector. This one comes as a shock even to me because I honestly don't like playing Collector locally. Anytime I do a classic tower video, Collector is just so boring. And unfortunately, he doesn't really have any skins to showcase either. So that's probably why you guys barely see him on my channel. But weirdly enough, anytime I use Collector online, it's because I don't care about winning or losing. But I don't know why. I, for some reason, have a really fun time using Collector. I feel like Collector and Spawn are the same. But the only difference is that when Spawn has a 3-4, Collector actually has about three of those. And what's even better is that most of Collector's attacks are actually mix-ups. So sometimes you can overhead your opponent and load the opponent. 
depends on what you're gonna use you could use this back four you can even use this four four but overall collector to me is just a really fun character which is very very weird i never thought i'd say this for online matches but yes originally i was gonna have him in the good tier but then i decided to put him in the end of grade at least just because i feel like if you deal with a collector player in a corner it's gonna be very difficult to deal with especially with this down back four move which is also an armor breaker which is also very good but yes, Collector to me is just a deadly character now. And over time, as I use him more and more, I started realizing that he is actually a great character. Moving on to the B tier, we're going to start off by talking about a character who I wish was in the A tier. But unfortunately, this man was just nerfed so many times to the point where I simply cannot put him there any longer. But in order to give him as much recognition as possible, I decided to put him in the top of B tier. And yes, we are talking about the showstopper, Johnny Cage. My boy Johnny Cage literally got nerfed so hard for no apparent reason. He just unfortunately became a character that nobody really uses online anymore. But regardless, I still think he is actually a good character in the game. Being honest with you guys, I actually prefer Mortal Kombat 11 Johnny Cage over X. I just feel like he has a lot of better combos in this game. They are a lot more fun to do, especially with the fact that you're able to cancel your fatal blow into sunglasses crushing blow it's just something that's really really cool and unique for johnny cage and because of that i feel like although he doesn't deserve the great tier he at least needs to be at the top of good tier because he is still a fun character his projectiles are also really good and fun to use especially his high and low force balls his original armor breaker was really bad it was basically the flippy kick except the thing is with you do more damage with an uppercut than that flippy kick but thankfully they also gave him the ability to armor break with his fist cuffs which just made him twice as better i just feel like with all the nerfs mortal kombat gave him all of the momentum that he had just simply died and although it did i feel like if i use johnny cage as a character i'd learn how to counter and punish my opponents better so although he isn't a great character i still want him to be at least at the top of good tier because i'd still have fun using him next up we have the legendary hanzo hasashi the man himself scorpion i want you guys to go back in time for a second and think about scorpion from mortal kombat 9 and mortal kombat x i'm gonna let you guys sink it in for a second i don't care what anybody says that was the happiest time of my life but then Mortal Kombat 11 released, and what the hell, man. <laughs> There's a lot of you guys out there that really hate going against Scorpion players for some reason. I, and I honestly just don't see why. At least for the Scorpions that I fight, all they tend to do is just spam forward 4, grab me, or even spam his down forward 4, I believe is what it is. It's basically where he spins his chain all the time. 90% of the time, I always beat these Scorpion players, but this is where the pro standpoint comes in. When a good Scorpion player ends up punishing or anti-airing you or any sort of things like that, right after that, Scorpion can literally combo you to death. And it's all thanks to his legendary spear. Now, yes, although you do have to waste bar and you have to waste meter, he is still a very deadly character if he manages to hit combos on you. One underrated move that I think not a lot of people use is actually his Sin Blade. Although I don't use the move as much, I can understand as to why it is a really good move because it is basically Mortal Kombat X mechanics, but in Mortal Kombat 11, which is why I think it's pretty cool. And I'm probably going to use it a little bit more in the future, but overall... I just think Scorpion's a good character now only because of the way the pros use him because the way casuals use him is honestly a joke compared to Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 9. Next up we have Robocop and for those of you who don't follow me on Twitter uh <laughs> while I was in this tournament that I participated in there was a little incident that uh occurred to me and after seeing how this player used robocop i realized that he is actually a character that should not be messed with i'm having ptsd flashbacks right now so if you guys will excuse me i'm gonna just move on yes robocop is better than most of these characters that are on the good tier we are officially halfway done with this tier list and we're gonna be moving on to noob cybot and this character to me is a little bit of a complicated one the reason why I have him high on my list is because I feel like when you punish or counter your opponent with Noob Saibot, they suffer the consequences big time. He has a good amount of crushing blows, not to mention he also has combo startups that can lead to even deadlier combos. And if anything, 
I think he has one of the best combo strings in the game. There is so many unique ways you can do combos with him. But I don't have him on great tier because it is a little bit difficult to actually counter and punish your opponents. And that's something that I think Noob Saibot lacks on just a little bit. I think what stands out most about Noob Saibot is actually his slide. But I honestly don't see any issues with it. Especially knowing the fact that they actually need to waste meter for it to be twice as deadlier. His armor breaker is back to... I think it's actually one of the better ones in the game. Simply because you could actually just combo right after that and literally like i said his combos are absolutely deadly he definitely belongs in good tier for me and for where he's at right now i think is perfect next up we have mr shangalanga ding dong i absolutely love his ninja variation he has a good amount of mix-ups a really good amount of combos as well especially if you use that ninja variation but one thing that i think shang Tsung is missing is damage and that's actually the reason as to why i think noob saibot is better just because i feel like noob saibot has these crazy combos and they do a really good amount of damage for the amount of hits that it has but Shang Tsung just has the complete opposite of that you have all these great combos but unfortunately you only get about 30 percent for the most part i didn't look into it much but i heard that something was wrong about Shang Tsung's armor breaker where it actually used to be really really good it, i believe it did 100 damage with johnny cage but for now i'm going to consider it a good armor breaker what you guys are seeing on screen right now is my combo that i did a while back as you guys could see it does do a decent amount of damage as well so i'm just going to consider it a good one for now like i said i don't know exactly what happened to it but we're going to move on here i feel like when it comes to his crushing blows they are almost impossible to hit at most parts but when you do i mean most of them are pop-ups and i guess you could combo right after them but they are really difficult to hit shang Tsung is a character that i'm comfortable using with online and where he is at right now i think is fine cassie cage is up next and i feel like she's just like squirpy and Aaron black and kitana in which mkx cassie was so much better compared to what she was now she does have a good amount of combos but i find it a little bit challenging to hit them but I feel like she's actually a good character just because I feel like most of her combo strings are actually good. Not to mention her special moves as well. I mean, she has kneecapping and also her armor breaker, the back forward three move, which honestly, in my opinion, saved her as a character. If MK11 never had the armor breaking system, I think Cassie Cage would have been a lot lower on my list. But since it does exist now, she's a lot higher on my list. Next up on the list, we have Frost. And with this character, I feel like she is a really good character, except there is one thing that she is missing, and that is crushing blows. Now, yes, you can argue that she does have quite a few of crushing blows, but let's be honest here, they are a little bit difficult to hit. For instance, she has a special move that involves her drills, and she basically shoots them both one at a time, but you can only hit the second one at a specific distance for the crushing blow to hit, and it's just complicated for her. You just simply aren't going to hit these kinds of crushing blows in online matches. I feel like most of her characters relies on crutch special moves and for those of you who don't know what that means it basically means that she has to rely on specific moves in order to be a good character and that's something that i've noticed about the b tier i feel like a lot of these characters in here have to rely on specific special moves just to be a good character and that's something that you just don't want in mortal kombat you want to have the ability to use every single special move and to have fun with it but with frost you just don't get that I will say that she does have a really good amount of projectiles and I feel like she's a really good character when it comes to zoning and keep away. But other than that, I honestly wouldn't use her for any other situation. Next up on the B tier, we are going to be talking about Kung Lao. Let's say there was a total of 40 MK11 characters and I'm pretty sure a lot of people wish that. And if I was to rank them from worst to best, Kung Lao for me would be dead in the middle at the 20th spot. I just feel like he's already a good character with the way he is and if the variation system never existed he would have probably been higher in this list because I don't think there is any specific variation that Kung Lao needs for him to be a good character because what he has as a default is already good. All Kung Lao needs is his spin, his air kicks, the ability to teleport and maybe even use his hat as projectiles and that's literally all Kung Lao needs. But when I face a Kung Lao player online all they tend to do is just jump, jump, jump and sometimes confuse their opponents with teleporting while they're jumping or maybe even hitting them with a dive kick i don't know man i just feel like kung lao isn't a fun player that i would like to use i just feel like he's missing a lot of things he just feels very unfinished to me something that i just saw right now there is gonna be a little tiny change on the b tier so uh let me go ahead and just do that real quick 
after looking at the B tier, I realized that Baraka was a little bit lower than I expected because there are a couple of characters here that I prefer not using than Baraka, so I decided to move him right next to Kung Lao. I feel like Baraka has improved over time, and I feel like a lot of players out there actually use him a whole lot better now. Although you don't really see him in tournaments as often, I have to say that Baraka is still a very deadly character. He has some of the best crushing blows in the game, if not the most damaging as well. His armor breaker is really good. He has a lot of cool special moves. He is a fun character. The way he was made in Mortal Kombat 11 is okay. I don't really have a problem with it. I just wish most of his moves like i guess involving the tarkatan flag i just wish they could do a little bit more with it because for me any move that involves his flag just seems a little bit useless to me except for the one that gives you a little bit of a damage boost i guess but it only lasts for about five seconds his jumping attacks even if it's a kick or a punch is probably the best in the game and i just think baraka is a solid character overall he is fun to use i would love to use him more in online but i just feel like he needs a little bit more next up we have <coughs> Jesus. Next up, we have the son of Argus, Rain. One special move I want to talk about is his Hydro Boost. I feel like a lot of Rain mains actually use this special move, especially if they're doing tournaments. I feel like it's one of the most powerful special moves that he has, but unfortunately, it actually replaces his Geyser Kick if you do end up choosing it, which is something that I just simply was not a fan of. I feel like because of the Geyser Kick, Rain ha actually has combos in the game. Now, yes, even though it does replace his Geyser Kick, you still can combo using hydro boost but just thinking about it i feel like the geyser kick would actually still do more damage putting special moves aside for a second it's like i said he has good ones i like them a lot he does have combos and they are really fun to do but the one problem about him is that he unfortunately is probably one of the weakest characters when it comes to damage he also only has about three or four crushing blows which is honestly really sad to me so when you combine not having a good amount of damage and not having a lot of crushing blows it just seems like a weak character to me and unfortunately although i do see him quite a bit in tournaments with hydro boost i honestly just don't see rain winning any tournaments anytime soon so the characters that i'm going to talk about moving forward i've only used about four or five times and as you guys could see on the list it's probably for good reason as well i mean we're going to start off things by talking about shao Kahn. this is a controversial character right off the bat thankfully he's a whole lot better now but even to this day i still find some struggles with shao Kahn, especially with his ridicules all i wanted for them was to be a little bit faster because having more damage with shao Kahn makes sense but the fact that you're risking about five seconds of your time just to get these specific damage boosts is a waste of time He's a really unsafe character. I feel like most of his special moves are really unsafe as well. But when it comes to his other movesets, if he does end up hitting his opponent or punishing them, he has some really good combos. He has some of the best armor breakers in the game. I believe he has three or four, which is absolutely insane. If you understand your opponent well, and for the most part, you end up countering or punishing his attacks, I feel like Shao Kahn ends up being a really good character because after you hit your opponent with combos, it's literally a guaranteed about 40 to 60% with Shao Kahn. And for that reason, I feel like he deserves to be in the good tier. Moving on to the lower half of the B tier, the next character we're going to be talking about is Nightwolf. Nightwolf to me has a strength and a weakness. Strength being his projectiles, his zoning, his keep away, decent amount of mix-ups, and a decent amount of crushing blows if you use different variations. He also ends up having some pretty good combos if you end up countering your opponent. But one thing that I do find weak in Nightwolf is combo starters. One being his down forward two, which I believe is his tomahawk swing. And the other one being way worse, which is his back forward four. Now, just like all the other characters, you do have to waste a meter in order for it to be a combo starter. But the thing with Nightwolf is that sometimes when you do waste a meter, if you don't time it right the move actually misses occasionally and that goes for both of these special moves and now that i'm thinking about it i realize that that specific move that is his back forward four actually replaces his tackle which is why i think when it comes to online matches i feel like nightwolf would be better off in his command grab variation he has his armor breaker there i believe he has a crushing blow that involves one of the command grabs I just feel like I would have a better chance of winning online matches if I use this variation compared to his other two. Next up, we actually have Sindel. This one might come to a shock to some of you, but I just see Sindel as a character that has dropped. 
you don't really see them in online matches anymore. Part of me thinks that it's actually because a lot of players out there have figured out ways on how to counter a Sindel spammer specifically. But putting that aside for a second, her combos are extremely fun to do, especially when you have those screaming variations where she can scream while she's in midair and all that crazy stuff. And sometimes people end up falling for these moves as well because what they don't realize is that they're overheads and you know the fact that Sindel's able to spam it about seven or eight times just makes it so much more confusing for the opponent. Unlike Sub-Zero, I feel like Sindel's mix-ups have become more reactable over time. I believe her forward four actually got nerfed as well, which just toned her down a whole lot more, which is why I think a lot of Sindel players left. But if you are a really good Sindel player, that's what makes her a good character to me. I feel like as long as you understand your opponent well, she does tend to be a good character. Next up on my list, we actually have Rambo. And I don't know why, but there's a lot of you weirdos out there that say that Rambo is probably the worst character in Mortal Kombat 11. And I have to say, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I have seen so many Rambo players pop up in tournaments many, many times. I feel like at first, maybe when people didn't actually understand how to use him well, yes, maybe he would have been the worst character, but over time, I feel like Rambo has improved a lot, and lately I've been fighting a lot of them as well, and I feel like he's just improved so much as a character. Another thing that stands out to me is his Claymore. I feel like his Claymore is one of the funnest moves in Mortal Kombat 11. If you trap your opponent in a corner with Rambo and they have a Claymore, you're basically screwed as long as they don't fall for the Claymore themselves. Although his Armor Breaker isn't really the best one in the game when it comes to distance, I feel like it's still very damaging when they do time it right. And to those of you who say that he doesn't have combos, you're just lying to yourselves because as long as you have the snare trap and even in the claymore itself i feel like he has a pretty decent amount of combos in my opinion but regardless i still think he's a good character i don't know what a lot of people are saying that he's the worst character in the game now nah, you guys are just absolutely weird you're basically telling me that you prefer playing shiva over rambo what nah 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 next up on my list we have Jax, and i'm gonna be straight up with you guys right now i might be the only one in the world that thinks this but I don't like the way that Netherrealm did Jax in Mortal Kombat 11. He has a pretty good amount of moves, and thanks to those heated up arms, he actually ended up having a good amount of combos. But to me, I just feel like there's something missing in him. I don't know if it's because he is technically a slow character for me, or maybe it's because of the heating up system. I don't know what it is, but there's something about Jax that isn't right about this game. Let me know in the comments if you guys know what it is, but I just don't know what it is. I should quickly mention that his armor breaker seems to only be useful when his arms are fully heated up, which is probably the problem with Jax now that I think about it. I think I figured out the problem, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like Jax has way too many special moves for the amount of time we have to fight against the opponent. We only have two rounds, and I gotta say, during those two rounds, I don't think there's any man in this world who uses every single one of Jax's crushing blows and every single one of his special moves. But because of all these special moves that he has, I feel like he deserves to at least be in the good tiers. So here he is in B tier. Next up on the B tier, we actually have Kano. And I have to admit, if there's any character that I have not used the most, it is actually Kano. But regardless, there is a couple of moves that I do want to talk about. First off being his armor breaker. What I didn't figure out until about five months ago is that Kano's armor breaker is actually a restance. This is how you know that I do not play Kano at all, right? Because the fact that I didn't know about this sucked. And because of that, he probably would have been on my C tier. But thankfully, I figured it out. It's a restance. He is now in B tier for me. I want to give a quick shout out to all you Kano mains out there that use Snake Bite and Lumbar Check. Every other one of you scumbags that use Chemical Burn or anything like that, you a bum. His back forward three move is also really powerful, especially if you jump and use it, which is something that a lot of toxic Kano players do, but you guys are bums because you guys always end up losing. But regardless, I mean, there's no denying and saying that he's actually a good character. He could easily beat you in a matter of seconds if you're not careful, especially if you're in a corner and you're dealing with the Toxic Kano player. But yeah, like I said, he has to be in good tier. And as much as I want to put him in okay, simply because of all of you bad Kano players out there, he belongs in good, especially if you know how to use him. Next up, we have a character that desperately needs a buff, but unfortunately, now that the game is finished, she is never going to get it. We have the one and only Scarlet. I'm sure Scarlet is a little bit self-explanatory. There's a lot of you out there who understand as to why she is low on the list. You might be wondering as to why I have her a little bit higher than other characters, and that's simply because when it comes to keep away and zoning, I think Scarlet is actually a pretty good character. She has a really good amount of projectiles. She has the ability to teleport as well, so if they try to spam projectiles at her, they end up getting punished for it, and she also has a decent amount of combos as well. So overall, I don't think she's a bad character. I just think that the only thing she lacks is damage. And damage is very, very important, especially if the character involves getting rid of your own blood. 
And compared to Mortal Kombat 9, I mean, it's just a major nerf for Scarlet. Next up, we have Little Miss. Your head will adore my throne. The one and only Melina. Melina is another character that I think is self-explanatory. I mean, she just feels like an unfinished character in general. I have her on good tier because I feel like with the mix-ups that she has, some being an overhead low and a low overhead, I just simply think that it can confuse the opponent in some cases. And I've even seen a Melina player actually win a whole tournament recently. Probably one of the best Melina players, if not the best that I've ever seen. Because of that reason, I feel like Melina should at least be higher than okay. I think she's a good character in this game. Her size are probably the best projectiles, not to mention, and also her armor breaker is pretty damaging as well. Keep in mind, even though I do have her in B tier, I feel like putting her in between B and C would be okay for me. But regardless, I just simply think that after seeing that tournament player using Melina and actually winning all the whole thing with her, I have to put her in B tier for it. As time goes by, I think Melina is going to be better and better as a character. The more people figure her out, the better she will become. Let's talk about Raiden. So right now I'm actually on Mortal Kombat 11 and I'm going to tell you guys a list of moves that I guarantee you nobody uses. Joe Push, Electric Burst, Quick Charge, Rolling Thunder, Super Bolt, Lightning Storm, Lightning Rod, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these moves are absolutely useless to Raiden. Honestly, I prefer using Raiden as a standalone character with his default move set, not having any variations whatsoever. The only two special moves here that I see that seem to be very useful is Storm Cell and the Teleport, which is probably what every Raiden main uses at this point. I just think Raiden is also another character that feels unfinished, but I only have him in good tier because of his back 1-2 move. I feel like if it wasn't for that, he definitely would have been in the C tier. That specific combo string, I mean, you can cancel into a special move right after it, you could fake your opponent by teleporting with it. There's just so many good things about it. And yes, Raiden does have some pretty cool combos as well. His armor breaker is the second worst in the game, which is why I have him so low. Overall, I think Raiden's another self-explanatory character. There's not much to say about him, so we're going to move on to Sonya Blade here. I have just been informed that there is a soccer game between Mexico and USA, and it is for some sort of final. I have to go watch this soon, and because of that, I only need two more characters. I'm going to try my best to finish this video before it, so we're just going to go in raw here. Sonya Blade. Uh, she has the worst armor breaker in the game, in my opinion. It's literally just forward three. Like, it's one of the most useless things I've ever seen. Most of her character herself relies on her mix-ups, unfortunately. Her special moves are absolutely useless. But because of those mix-ups, I feel like she's a really good character. They are almost unreactable, but she was just nerfed so hard. I mean, her down back... F Is it down back two? Yeah, her down back two move, where it basically anti-airs any player it used to be a pop-up they unfortunately nerfed that and ever since then her character has just been forgotten ever since but still if it wasn't for her unreactable mix-up she definitely would have been in the c tier but i mean she was almost there as you guys could see but i just simply didn't want to put her there because i feel like i would have a good time using sonya and our last character we finally made it oh my lord it is devora um i barely use this character i think everybody in the world despises her story wise but when it comes to online there's a couple of you devora mains out there and i have nothing but respect for you guys you guys always try to find something new with her and i respect you guys for that but until then i just honestly have no interest using devora she almost made it to the c tier I guess the only reason why Devora is a good character is because of her anti-air. Devora has, in my opinion, the best anti-air in the game, which is her down forward 2 move. If you are using her Widow Kiss variation, you also have the ability to combo right after that specific anti-air. And man, I gotta tell you guys, she is very damaging. For that reason, I do have her in B tier. I cannot deny that she is a very damaging character, but... At the same time, she doesn't have a lot of special moves that are great, just like Raiden and Sonya. Literally, most of her special moves are absolutely useless. She also has a bad armor breaker, in my opinion. All it does is just resenses the opponent, but still keeps them safe on block for some reason. She's just a character I have no interest in, and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for all the support. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time. I am burned out. I'm going to go watch Sonya now. Okay,